a young man who had been studying martial arts. Uh, and, and he had pretty much mastered everything that he needed to be taught. And he came to his, uh, I guess the master who was teaching him said, you've taught me everything that I needed to know about defending myself. He said, and now I want you to teach me the ways of God. And the instructor looked at him and he got up and he went and got uh, a tea kettle. And he set two cups down and he started to pour tea into the young man's cup. And soon the cup filled up and it overflowed. And first it overflowed into the saucer and then it overflowed from the saucer onto the table. And pretty soon it was running down onto the floor and the young man jumped up and said, Stop! He can't hold anymore. And with that, the instructor looked at him and he said, You will never know the ways of God until you know that you have to empty yourself to be filled. He said the cup couldn't hold anymore because it was full. You can't know the ways of God because you're full of yourself. You need to be empty. That's a pretty profound statement, isn't it? Yes. You know, I assume because you gather here today, and maybe a wrong assumption, that you come to get closer to God, that you come to worship God, that you come to learn more about God, to enhance your relationship with God, that you want to get to know God. That's just an assumption. But, but I'm assuming since you committed this kind of time and effort to get here, that's what you want to do. Now, with that being said, my question to you is, are you empty enough to experience God? In other words, if you created a space in your heart and your soul to experience God in a new way, or are you full? Are you already full? You know, people say, well, what do you mean by being empty? Is it, you know, I had a good breakfast, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty full, but I mean, or some people say, no, I didn't have a good breakfast, and I wish you'd hurry up because I'd like to go eat. <laughs> I said, but either way, I'm not talking about that kind of full. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about a physical full. I'm talking about a spiritual full. I mean, have you, have you created, you have a, a hole in your, in your heart, in your soul, in your faith, where you can experience God in new ways, or are you filled up with so much stuff from the world? But you really have no spot for God anymore. You know, I've given him this part, but I don't have a spot for the whole thing. That's you know, a question you have to answer for yourself. In today's scripture reading, we're gonna we're gonna experience a woman, or we're gonna hear about a woman who has kind of been emptied out. I mean, everything's been taken from her. She was a woman of of prominence, you know, a good standing in the community, and and. Her husband's been taken away from her, and all of a sudden she has nothing but debt. There wasn't no life insurance back then. She didn't have any life insurance to bail out her debt. All she has is a bunch of debt, and she has two boys. Two boys that are about to be sold into slavery to pay the debt, which will leave her to do nothing but beg for coins on the street. Her life went from here to here in the blink of an eye. Does that happen sometimes? Right? Maybe not with the death of someone, but does that happen in your life? You, know, you lose a job, right? Someone walks out of your life, you lose a relationship. Someone may pass, you lose a relationship. But life can change just like that. And in the blink of an eye, everything we thought was is no more, right? Right? It's possible, right? Let's hear this lady's story. 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, if you want to follow along in your Bible. It says, A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elijah, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, and that the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elijah said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, your, your maidservant has nothing in her house but a jar of oil. Then he said, 
Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, and then you should pour into these those vessels and set aside the full ones. So when she so she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her sons, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your son will live on the rest. May God bless today's reading. Now, did you notice the first thing he asked her? He said, what shall I do for you? But then he said, what? He said, so what do you have? What do you have left to work with? That's kind of a strange question. Isn't it? And what did she say? I got nothing. I got nothing. I've been emptied out. In other words, my house is empty. I got a jar of oil. And that's it. I have nothing. <clears throat> I think sometimes we have to regroup when we have nothing. When life hits us, you know, when life smacks you in the mouth, and all of a sudden you're, you're, you're stunned. Because what we have to realize is that we always have something. She didn't think she had anything, but she said she had what? A jar. A jar of oil. That's it. But you know, God can do a lot with a jar of oil, can't he? We need to realize that God can do a lot with a little. Actually, God can do a lot with nothing. But God can do a lot with a little, right? So a lot of times when we get hit, and we start feeling sorry for ourselves, and life has knocked us down, you know, those things that come at us hard, and they hit us hard, and they knock us to our knees, we need to kind of take a deep breath and look around and count the blessings. Though they may be small and seem insignificant to us, sometimes our blessings are really big things. Sometimes we underestimate our blessings. I saw a video on Facebook, you know, I get all my theology from Facebook, but, but I saw this video on Facebook and it, and it shows a pro progression thing of, of, of cartoon and it had two cars sitting by each, by each other at a stoplight. One was a brand new shiny sports car and the other one was a new car and the new guy in the new car said, man, I just I said, I wish I had that fancy sports car. And the next screen you see the new car and an old car. The guy in the old car said, man, I just wish I had that new car. And in the next slide, you see the old car and a guy riding a bicycle. And the guy on the bicycle says, man, I just wish I had that old car. That would make my life so much easier. And in the next slide, you see the bicycle and a man walking. And the man walking said, man, I just wish I had that bicycle. I sure could go a lot farther and a lot faster if I just had that, had that bicycle. And the next scene, the shot widens up. And you see a, a man sitting on a balcony with no legs. He says, man, I just wish I had legs to walk. You see, a lot of times we, we think, we picture the world as, as we see it as like, I have nothing. But in fact, we really have a lot. And we have a lot to be thankful for. Even if it's just that little jar of oil, Right? God can use that little jar of oil to go a long way, and He does, right? What's the next thing He tells her in the Scripture? He says, go and gather vessels. Go get you a bunch of empty vessels, as many empty jars as you can find. And bring them to your house and go in there and shut the door. But I don't know about you, but I'm feeling empty. I don't want more empty. <laughs> right? right? <laughs> I mean, it's like, you got nothing, go get a bunch more nothing. You know, that's like, what? Is that what you got for me? I mean, I mean, you got to really understand that. I mean, sometimes you want more than that. But she's not me. She follows directions. So she goes and has her son. They gather all these vessels and they go in the house and they close the door behind them 
And she takes the oil and she starts pouring the jar of oil into these vessels. And she pours. 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 And the oil just keeps coming and coming. And one, two, three, and pretty soon every vessel, empty vessel that they have brought to her is filled with oil. Enough so that when she goes back, he says, you can sell that oil and pay off your debt and you'll have enough for you and your sons to live off of. I need that jar. <laughs> Don't you? Don't you wish you had that job that you're out? <laughs> Little poor here. Need a new car? Poor. <laughs> you know, need my house payment? Poor. You know, we all wish we had that jar, right? But that's God's miracle. He took that little jar and used it to fill those empty vessels. Right? You notice the vessels weren't full when he filled them. Vessels didn't fill themselves, did they? No. God used that oil to fill those vessels. God fills your emptiness, you see. That's what God's good at. Filling our emptiness, right? <coughs> Nobody strives to be empty, do they? Nobody really wants to be knocked down. Nobody wants to lose their job. Nobody wants to lose their source of income or relatives or friends or their health. Nobody volunteers for that, right? You know, say, I need somebody to have a bad day. Well, that'd be me. Mm, take me. Take me. Or, you know, I need somebody to lose their job this week. Who's it going to be? Ooh. I'm good for that. Take me. Take me. Nobody signs up for that, do they? Those aren't places we want to be in life. We don't want life to be emptied out of us, right? We want to be what? Filled up, right? We want to be full of life. But you know, there's, there's several kinds of being empty. There's the emptiness of when life hits you like that, when it knocks you down, and it takes stuff away from you or someone away from you, and it leaves you feeling what? Empty inside, doesn't it? Most of us, I think, have been there. Where we lost someone or something that, something that was very important to us, right? But there's another kind of emptiness. The emptiness that comes from a self-examination and realizing that we have junk in our lives that needs to be emptied out. It's kind of like when you go out to your shed you know, and you haven't been out there in too long. And, and uh, I saw some wives look at husbands. You know, he was, <laughs> <laughs> it was just funny to watch them. And, uh, but you go out there and you got all that junk out there that you've been accumulating over the years so much that you, you kind of got to just to get in, you know? And it kind of needs to be what? It needs to be emptied out. It needs to be cleaned out. You need to rid of the junk so you can get to the good stuff, right? <laughs> right? Right. We need to get rid of some stuff, right? I'm going to say, no, that's the good stuff. Always <laughs> husband's <laughs> doing Look, he tried to draw me into something that I'm not giving you. <laughs> I'm just giving you an example here. I'm not saying it's true of everyone. <laughs> but, but sometimes we got junk in our lives, right? And it's not junk like in a, in a shed, actually. It's junk in our hearts, right? It's that unforgiveness, right? That hatred. That lack of love or lack of mercy for others. I mean, it, didn't it start off that way, but it kind of grew. We weren't planning on it getting that big, but all of a sudden it's big and it's a barrier. It's a barrier to us experiencing God in the fullest way that we possibly can. And now you got a wall there. We got to knock that wall down. We got to empty out some of us so we can experience more of God. Right? We need to be emptied out too. Right? Because I'm going to tell you something that, that Jesus is really good at. It's filling empty spots. You know, sometimes we try to fill 
those holes in our heart with other things. Sometimes it's alcohol or, or lust or sex or drugs. Whatever we try to fill it with or stuff. If I just have a new car, I'll feel better. I, mean, I just will. My house is bigger, I'll be, man, I'll be good. I'll just have more stuff to clean. I love that. I love that. <laughs> you know, if I could just get a new couch or a bigger TV, you know, 65 is not enough. You know, they have a 70 now. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. And, uh, and uh, you know, what was good enough yesterday is not good enough today, and it just leaves us wanting, right? It leaves us wanting because we're trying to put stuff into a hole that was only meant to be filled by God. So it will never leave you satisfied. It will only leave you wanting more stuff. You need to fill that hole in your heart that's God-shaped with God. Because that's what it was created for. We need to be less about us and more about God. But I'm busy. I know. I'm too busy for that. I said, I hear what you're saying. It's good, good in theory, but I'm kind of busy. I've got a lot of businesses going on. i got a lot of stuff going on. I ain't got time to read the Bible during the week. I ain't got time to pray during the week. You don't have time not to. Let me just put it out there. You don't. You need to be striving every day to get as close to God as you can. Each and every one of us. None of us are immune. Each and every one of us can empty a little more out and take a little more in. God. But let me get back to Jesus. Did you read, if you read through the Bible, if you're, if you're taking time to read through the Bible, I mean, if you read through the Bible, and you notice when Jesus encounters people, they usually have a need, right? And he almost always fills that need. I say almost, and I'll get back to that in just a minute. But do you remember when he had the 5,000 people? And he had five fish and and two, I mean, five loaves and two fish, you know, enough for a fish sandwich. And, 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 he had, and he had to feed all those people. And he what? He did, right? There was enough with some left over, right? Why did he feed them? Because there was a need, right? They were hungry. And so he fed them. And there was no McDonald's around the corner, no KFC. They're not in the middle of the wilderness. They need to be fed. And he feeds them. He fills that need. He takes care of that emptiness. Right? Right? Right. Okay, I'll just make sure you're with me. <laughs> make sure you're with me here. But time and time again, do you remember the first, Bible, first miracle in the Bible in the book of John? This is the wedding at Cana, right? Where he, they run out of wine. And what happens? Turn to water in your wine. wine. Makes more wine. Turns water into wine. He tells them, fill those six empty jars. You notice they were empty. Fill the six empty jars with water. And then he's able to turn into wine. But not only wine, but the best wine. Did you notice that? When you read that story, why'd you save the best for last? You know, they usually save the junk for last. You know, they say, here, have a lot of wine. Once you can't really tell the difference, I'll give you the cheap stuff, right? He said, why did you save the best for last? You see, he didn't fill the jars at the beginning of the wedding. And do you think Jesus knew there was going to be a need? He knows everything else, right? So he knew there was going to be a need. He waited until they were empty, and they needed, and they need, and then he fills that need. And he doesn't fill it with junk. He fills it with the best. Something better than what was there before. You know, I wonder how often we go through life just settling for stuff. We settle for what we get because we're afraid to trust in God and get something better. You know, we keep that hand clenched. I got that. I got what's in here. But I'm trying to give you more. Just open up your hand. No, no, I got that. I'm good. I got what's in here. But I want to give you so much more. No, 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 no. I, I, I got what's in here. And we're afraid to do this. We're afraid to let go of what we got and grasp the wonderful things that God's got for us in life. We're settlers. Have you seen that commercial? I don't know if you've seen the commercial on uh, DirecTV. He said, you know, the sun comes up. Can we have a 
can we have direct TV like modern neighbors? And no, so we're settlers. <laughs> you know, we sell their stuff. <laughs> you know, you got your stick and hoop, and your your sister's got her faceless doll, and your mom's got her cabbages, and, and I got my knees stop, you know, our legs stop, whatever. It is. So we settle. You know, a lot of times I think that's how we go through life. We settle instead of experiencing God, instead of letting go of our self-centeredness and letting go of our way to experience God's way so we can experience God in new ways and, and ways we hadn't even thought about experiencing God. But we're so... Hmm, got to be in control. Can't let it go. I need that junk. I need that junk. I need that unforgiveness. I need that hatred. I need it. You don't understand. I need that. I gotta have it, I can't let it go. It's part of who I am. And God says, empty it out and I'll fill it with something better. I'll fill it with love and forgiveness and mercy and kindness. And you'll experience the world in a whole different way. And you'll experience a peace. But first you gotta get rid of the junk. You gotta empty it out, right? We have to empty out ourselves so we can experience God in a new way. You know, when that lady was filling those jars and the oil just kept coming and just kept coming, you think she was sad? You think she was saying, oh, this is terrible. This is bad stuff. I can't believe this oil. oil. Who's going to clean this oil up anyway? <laughs> you know, no. She was happy because she had something what? Better. There's a better way. But first, you have to experience the emptiness. And sometimes you don't choose to empty, experience the emptiness. Sometimes it's thrust upon you. You know, when you go to the doctor and he gives you a bad report, you didn't plan that. When there's a car accident, you lose somebody, you, you didn't plan that. Right? Sometimes life thrusts emptiness upon us. You lose your job and you're about to lose your home and you, and you don't know what you're going to do and where you're next. Sometimes emptiness comes and we don't don't want it. But sometimes, sometimes it's a choice. It's a choice that we have done a self-examination and we have found ourselves wanting. We have found ourselves in need of an emptying. We have found ourselves in need of emptying out space so God can fill it. That we want to lose self to gain God. You see, you're filling is directly proportional to your emptiness. Let me say that again. God's filling in your life is directly proportional to your emptiness. If there's no space, He can't fill it. Get rid of the junk. I want to read you a quote from uh, D.L. Moody. Uh, 19th century evangelist, you probably have heard heard of him, but let me read you what he what he what he wrote here. So I think it fits almost perfectly with, with what I've been talking about this morning. It says, I firmly believe the moment our hearts are empty of pride, selfishness, and ambition, and self-seeking, and everything contrary to God's law, the Holy Spirit will come and fill every corner of our hearts. But if we are full of pride, conceit, and ambition, and self-seeking pleasures of the world, there is no room for the Holy Spirit of God. And I believe many a man is praying that God will fill him when he is full already of something else. Before we pray that God fill us, I believe we ought to pray that he empty us. That's pretty profound, isn't it? It's kind of a wake up call. You know, I don't know how empty or how much of you needs to be emptied. I, I don't know that. I don't claim to know your heart. I don't. That's for you to decide. But I encourage you to examine it. Do a little self checkup. I know you're not a doctor, but you probably have stayed at a Holiday Inn Express at some point in your life. I mean, you've got enough knowledge there to kind of look at yourself and say, am I living the way God wants me to live? 
Am I doing the things that God wants me to do? Am I hearing what God has to say? Or am I following my own path, my own way, not really tuned into what God wants? Show up occasionally on Sunday and I'll check in and I'll give God the old Sunday night. Glad to be here. Glad you're here. There's more than just showing up on Sunday. You know that. You know it. You may not confess it or profess it or claim it, but you know in your heart there's more to this than just showing up on Sunday. Right? This is the lifestyle you've chosen. That might force you to become a Christian. This is a commitment you made to God. And God made to you. But in order for Him to fill you, you must first empty those things that block Him from filling you. You must make room for Him in your heart, and in your soul, and in your mind, in your every day. Why? That's a choice too. You know, Moody also said that God sends no one away empty except those who are full of themselves. I guess we all need to kind of check ourselves and see are we full of ourselves? Is there space for God? Is there time for God? And there, and there may already be. Like I said, I'm not judging your heart. I'm just asking you to examine and if there's anything from a boulder to a pebble that's blocking God from coming into your life and you, you fulfilling God in a new way, then I pray that you would empty that out. So you can come to God and say, fill her up. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right.